Warning, sulfuric acid is corrosive. Lead and lead compounds are toxic. Wear gloves when handling them. Hi guys, this is Dr. NYH. This is the fourth episode of our first project, the three acids. Today we're making sulfuric acid by electrolysis. There are actually many ways to do this, and the most common way is electrolyzing a solution of copper sulfate, CuSO4. Many people had done that, and I will also be doing it in the next video. I have also come up with a new method that I consider more efficient than the copper sulfate, and that is electrolyzing manganese sulfate, MnSO4. I think that it is superior on both costs and hardness to operate. The only drawback is that manganese sulfate is harder to find. The only chemical we're gonna need today is obviously manganese sulfate. I bought this along with my other reagents in an online reagent store, but I think it is sometimes used as a fertilizer and can be reached in that way. We measure out 189 grams of manganese sulfate monohydrate and dissolve it in 300 milliliters of water. This proved to be a pain since my magnetic stir was too small to fit the large beaker and so I had to do it several times in smaller conical flasks. You can see by the messy beakers that I seriously had a hard time with this. In the end, I only got 90 grams of the salt to dissolve. We then move on to the electrodes. The cathode can be practically any metal, and I'm using a piece of foam nickel that is nickel electroplated onto sponge. This gives it a large surface area and is ideal for electrolysis. The anode is harder to choose, but plain lead metal gives an outstanding result. The ammeter shows 0.27 amps, and the cathode is bubbling vigorously. A lot of black substance is produced at the anode, and that is manganese dioxide. The manganese sulfate reacts with water to form sulfuric acid, manganese dioxide, and hydrogen. Our reaction produces manganese dioxide, which is a useful reagent, and I will use it to make potassium permanganate later. The electrolysis has been going for a day, and I tried filtering the manganese dioxide in the beaker. However, the filtering step is very, very slow even with the vacuum pump on. In fact, the vacuum pump barely does anything to this. The manganese dioxide particles are just too fine to be filtered, and this is a huge drawback to this process. I ended up putting everything back to the large beaker and electrolyzed it for another week. Alright, here we are after the week. The current had went up to 0.54 amps and everything is running decently. You can see that there is a thick layer of manganese dioxide on the bottom of the beaker. The electrolyte is still quite thick. Now I turn off the current to let the manganese dioxide all settle to the bottom. On the next morning, I disassembled the cell and took everything apart. This is the four alligator clip wires along with the USB power supply and they seem to be doing great and did not corrode. The current voltage meter is as good as new. The cathode, which is the foam nickel, showed no apparent corrosion. And the anode, which is lead dioxide, was coated in a bunch of manganese dioxide. When I washed it later, it was still in good conditions. Now for the electrolyte. It had settled quite a bit. It is hard to see on camera, but most of the manganese dioxide has already sunk to the bottom. Now I have to filter the electrolyte. The filter paper on the left is the casual quarter fold style, where there are three layers on one side and one on the other. The one on the right was the so-called flower fold, and it was supposed to go faster than the casual fold. It's the filter paper folded into its 16th. I started pouring the electrolyte into both funnels, but since the filter papers were too small, I cannot pour a lot in at once, and this later proved to be a huge pain. As you can see, the flower fold one was going faster, 
but it is still very slow considering that we had so much solution to filter over. I then tried filtering through cotton, which did not work at all, and doing a vacuum filtration, which was even worse than the cotton. I just didn't bother filming these ones because they are terrible failures. In the end, I simply gave up and dumped everything into the beaker again and let it settle. This filtering step literally ruined my happy mood for the day. The manganese dioxide produced was extremely fine as I mentioned last time, and filtering large amounts of it was literally impossible. I guess what I had to do next was let the solution settle, decot off the top part, and that should leave us with less particles. We then filter that solution, and it should be much faster. I ended up just doing that. This is the large beaker standing for an hour, and you can clearly see the top clear solution. I then decon this top clear solution into a conical flask, and leave the manganese dioxide residue behind. But it is fine if some manganese dioxide goes into the flask. I then add extra water to the residue to wash out the soluble stuff. I then let the smaller flasks stand and decon off the supernatant to other containers. I kept doing this, and that should leave nearly all manganese dioxide behind. I then decant and discard the water washing in the large beaker, and here is the remaining paste of manganese dioxide. I pour it into a plastic water basin to let the water evaporate off and obtain decently pure and dry manganese dioxide. There are still some solid left in the beaker, and I can't get it out, so that will be a loss, but anyways, nobody cares. The large beaker is then washed, and it is now as good as new. I pour all the supernatants into it again. Note that the solution is still murky, but it is a lot better than before. We then continue the electrolysis on the solution using the same lead dioxide and foam nickel electrodes we used before, and we'll see the results after a week. Meanwhile, I am starting the electrolysis of copper sulfate. I decided to do this because I thought it would be quite interesting to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. We only need copper sulfate for this. I learned from my mistake on using too much manganese sulfate and only used 25 grams this time. The 25 grams of copper sulfate is then dissolved in about 120 milliliters of water. The exact amount isn't critical. This time, the solution fits perfectly inside the stirrer, so it is good to do this in small scale. The electrodes for this is slightly different than the manganese sulfate, and we are using copper as the cathode. I am using a thick copper wire. Bend the wire into shape and hang it inside the flask. The anode is just, well, classic lead dioxide. We have the electrolysis set up the exact same as before, and I attach the electrodes and start applying the current. Bubbles began to form immediately on the lead dioxide anode, and if I zoom it in, you can see it better. The cathode has no apparent change, but it is slowly getting coated in copper, and you will see it later. This is why we use copper cathode instead of nickel. We're back the next morning, and here is what the solution looks like. It has lost its brilliant blue color and turned to a weird purple color. If I zoom in, you can see that the copper cathode is bubbling hydrogen, which means that the copper ions are consumed. A bulk of spongy copper is formed around it. The anode showed no apparent corrosion, so I mean I had no idea where the word purple comes from. If any of you guys had any ideas, I'd love to hear them in the comments. I disconnect the power supply and let the solution stand. Alright, this is, well, another week later. You see, this project seriously takes a lot of time. The manganese sulfate cell is still running nicely, and to my surprise, the electrolyte already cleared out and all the manganese dioxide has settled. If we zoom in, we can see that both electrodes release bubbles. This is a super good sign indicating that there are no manganese ions present and the reaction has finished. The manganese slurry we left last time was still quite wet. I decanted the supernatant in the large beaker and dumped all the manganese dioxide into the slurry. This is what it looks like afterwards, and I will leave it to dry. I then poured out the upper portion of the supernatant, which is relatively clear, and labeled it clean manganese. The lower portion, which still has some manganese dioxide, was labeled dirty manganese. I'll filter both and purify it further. Now to the copper sulfate. 
I already removed the electrodes and you can see that the solution is colorless except for those brown crystals floating around. These brown crystals are probably uh, the pink colors from last time. Our cathode, the copper wire, has a big lump of copper sticking on it. And I thought it is just a powder and will crumble when I touch it. It was, however, surprisingly solid and hard to break. The lead anode is perfectly fine. I then tried to recover the copper. I placed back the pieces of copper into the flask and I washed it several times with some water. I tried breaking the pieces again using a glass rod, but even after the washings, it did not seem to crumble apart. Here it is, the copper powder recovered, and the flesh-like red color is because of the camera. In real life, it is browner. I then tried to dry it on a hot plate, but unfortunately, the beaker broke, and I lost all my powder. I was only aiming for the electrolyte though, and did not worry about that too much. I sorted my electrolyte just like the manganese run, and it is relatively colorless, while the manganese ones have a slight yellow tint. Here is a picture of the four beakers laid together along with their pH testing. They are all quite acidic, indicating that our experiment has been a success. This video, well, it is very long, and it's supposed to just end here. However, I decided to do a sequel on it for the purification of the acids and the manganese dioxide. This will be done mainly in February, since it is the Chinese New Year now and I am away from my house. Anyways, see you next time. Bye!